Guys, consider Florida State's defensive line is the best in the league right now with 20 sacks. We'll see if Virginia's offensive line can hold up against the pressure. You know, with the old cliche, uh, Holly, of uh, baptism under fire, that's truly what is going to happen with the Cavaliers tonight. And I know that the coaching staff was hoping desperately that DeBrickishaw Ferguson would be well enough to Cavaliers tonight. And I know that the coaching staff was hoping desperately that DeBrickishaw Ferguson would be well enough to go. Kenny O'Neill is the man you're looking at, one of the two deep men for the Seminoles. And Lamar Lewis is the other deep return man waiting for this kick from Kurt Smith. And we are underway. This one is returnable. One yard deep in the end zone, and it's Lewis. Lamar Lewis will not get back to the 15-yard line. So Florida State will take it over with not so good field position at the 14. And it gives us an opportunity to talk about Drew Weatherford, the freshman out of uh, Land Lakes, Florida. And the last time we saw him, he had a pretty good ball game on the road against Boston College. And, Ron, he has continued to improve. The reason Florida State is the old Florida State with the four wide receiver offense is because of the development of Drew Weatherford has not thrown an interception in his last 48 pass attempts. So he'll go from the shotgun. Leon Washington is the setback, and he gets it on a little counter play. Nothing to the right. Whacked hard as he takes it at left guard, and it's going to be a gain of a couple, and that's Ty Parham who was there to put a stop on him. So here are the wide receivers and the backs for the Seminoles of Florida State. Washington and Coleman is the fullback. The receivers, Reed, Davis, and Matt Henshaw is the tight end. We'll check that offensive front. Niblock Claude is uh, Jackie Claude, the left guard. David Castillo was back. He's had foot problems, missed a couple of games, and they're glad that they have him back at that anchor position at center. First pass of the night. Got it complete. And that is Dakota Pag, who will be bumped out of bounds very close to the first down at around the 25-yard line. Here are the starters on defense for the Cavaliers. Here's the down three. Brennan Schmidt trying to be the all-time starts number leader in the history of Virginia football. Ahmad Brooks, he's been injured. He's only played about a game and a third, and tonight probably 85% as Florida State quickly back to the line of scrimmage, and they'll go with a quarterback sneak and pick up the first down with the third down and short. And Ron, this Virginia defense has their work cut out for them since halftime of the Boston College game three weeks ago. Florida State has been on fire. 587 yards total off against offense against Wake, 512 against Syracuse. First time since 2000, they've had back-to-back -back games of over 500 yards offense. Pass back into the sideline. Again, it's Cody to Cody Fagg, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds after a gain this time of about nine. And Bob, obviously, they have found something back into the boundary or on that right side of the offense. And, Ron, what they found, this quarterback can handle the spread set. You see them right here with only five offensive linemen, one back. You can blitz this formation defensively, but Florida State has found out their quarterback can handle the blitz. You see Virginia showing a blitz off the bottom of your screen on the left side. Creeping up, but now stays at home, and they play bump right over the middle. It's Fag again. Dakota Fag will take it across midfield, and it had to have been a hot read on the part of Drew Weatherford. That's good for 18 yards, and Tony Franklin on the tackle for the Cavs. You see Dakota Fag. He is their number one wide receiver, but he is one of eight wide receivers you will see on the field tonight. An amazing number. And their young core of receivers, just like Penn State last week and some other teams that we have had, extremely talented. Blitz by the linebacker, blitz by the safety, picked up and right over the middle, throws it complete, and then the hit is made. And the stop pushing him back to around the 35-yard line. Tony Franklin is the man who came up and made the stab on the play. And that is 14 a, yards. Excuse me, Ron. That is a great lick. You see Willie Reed right down the seam. And a great lick right there by Tony Franklin. 
the safety. Wow. Boy, hard to believe it. He could maintain his balance, but he's okay. So Reed makes the catch, and it is first down Florida State. They spot it at the 34-yard line. Pressure coming. Gets the ball away. Got a man intercepted. It's Marcus Hamilton, and he is pushed out of bounds across the way right in front of Bobby Bowden and his staff. Ty Parham is the man who forced the quick throw on the blitz. And, Ron, you said it last week against Wake Forest. They blitzed Drew Weatherford just about every down, and you're going to see right here from the top, Kai Parham, the linebacker, comes around. Drew Weatherford stands in there and just overthrows the receiver. But it all started with the pressure of Kai Parham. This guy leads the ACC with six sacks. They're taking a page out of the Wake Forest defensive playbook. Blitzing Drew Weatherford early in this football game. So a very good start offensively on the part of the Seminoles. But they come up with the turnover. Reverse. He can throw this ball night. He's got a man wide open. And it is almost intercepted. Emmanuel Byers was the man who was throwing the pass. So a little uh, trickeration, as Reese would say, to open the ball game tonight. And Pat Watkins almost came up with the pickoff. And really a great play by Deion Williams, number 81. The wide receiver turned into a defensive back on that play. The ball was underthrown. And you know, Bob, if he had delivered, if Emmanuel had delivered that ball sooner, he did have his man open. But there's a reason Emmanuel is a wide receiver <laughs> and not a quarterback. All right, your point is well taken. Second down and 10. Hagans zips the pass complete at the 32-yard line and then being pushed back immediately. Let's talk a little bit more about Marcus Hagans, the senior out of Hampton, Virginia. Didn't get an opportunity to uh, talk about him because of the exchange and the quick turnover. Bob, not a real big guy, but a very heady guy and is quicker than he is fast, actually. And has a personality to oh. match his productivity <laughs> on the field. This guy lights up a room. Without a doubt, he is the leader, and he gives Virginia the best chance to win this football game tonight. Michael Johnson, number two, is checked in a tailback. On the third down and six, they fake it to him. Hagan deep in the pocket, drills it, and flags all over the place. Deion Williams was the intended receiver. Tony Carter is the man, I believe, who has been flagged on the play. And Tony Carter is Florida State's best man-to-man -man coverage corner, and he was up there bumping run coverage that time. Bob, what do you do when you got a mismatch in size that way with a 6'3 receiver, 5'9 cornerback? You do exactly what Drew Weatherford does on the other side of the ball, throw it up in the air. Obvious call right there. You see Tony Carter grab that jersey from behind. <laughs> Ron, if Florida State does have a weakness on defense, I believe it is these corners, and Virginia has a great matchup with a couple big, tall, wide receivers out there on the perimeter. Bob, when you look at this ball game and the way it could and should unfold tonight, for the Cavaliers to be successful, they need to have something good happen early, don't they? And they have to take advantage of the turnover. And now this pass interference, they have some momentum right here. On first down, Hagan's going to run out of the pocket. Now he throws the ball, got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Covington comes back for the ball, and another pass interference is thrown. Tony Carter again. So Covington, who was also a very tall wide receiver, this time was the intended receiver. And Tony Carter is flagged for his second pass interference call on this uh, drive. One of the most difficult things for a corner is the underthrown deep ball. Right here, you're going to see Marcus Higgins starts to scramble, makes it difficult on the defense. But right here, because this ball is underthrown, the receiver has an advantage and the second pass interference on Tony Carter tonight. And when you get right down to it, it's actually a pretty good penalty because 
Covington was going to come back and catch that football if he doesn't tackle it. And what happens, the ball being underthrown, the receiver has the advantage because he sees early in the throw that it will be underthrown. He can retrace his steps and come back to the football. The corner has no chance to come back to the football. So if you just joined us, Florida State with a good-looking drive going, and they throw the interception. And now a couple of pass interference calls and Virginia on the move. Hagan's on the run, overthrows this one, looking for Dayon Williams. And now let's catch our breath and uh, go through some lineups here so that you know the youngsters who were on the field tonight for Virginia. The backs and receivers, Wally Lundy had a foot injury, but he's coming along. Jason Snelling is the fullback. And Dayon Williams is their home run fella, number 81. He can really pick him up and put him down. He's a guy that could give Florida State trouble tonight. Up front, DeBrickashaw Ferguson, the All-American. Many people say one of the top candidates for the Lombardi Award. He is finally able to go. Injured his left knee and has only played in about two and a half ball games so far this year. That's Byers in motion. Quick ball, and that is tapped. They better get on that because that was thrown behind. And now here comes a flag in. Marcelo Church, the linebacker for the Seminoles, is the man who came in, leaped high in the air, and tipped the ball. And I think if we see this again on the replay, as we see the holding call in Virginia, that was a backwards pass and could be a live football right there. That ball was thrown backwards. Tough to get that call, though. They're hesitant to call that on that swing pass. Well, as we know, every play is reviewable, and they are reviewing virtually everything that happens. And you can see the side is says, bad call, but for the folks from Virginia, you actually got a very big break. That could have been a fumble recovery by Florida State at midfield. And I think the point would be the whistle blew on that play. Let's see here if they are going to review this. But the problem they have, they blew the play dead, I would think, in my opinion. Where do they go the from there? The play is being reviewed. Now let's go back now and take the next step. If they do say it is a backwards pass, who recovered this, Florida which State. would be a fumble right here? Now that's that's behind. I don't think there's any question about that. And Florida State is right there. But my, if they blew the whistle, you're right. That, my point, Ron, from the beginning was, as you just said, they obviously blew that whistle because everyone on that football field stopped. That is a backwards pass. Right now it's a live ball. But obviously the whistle has blown. And if the whistle blew, that would overrule the review of the call, in my opinion. Wow. So what happens is then Bob, it goes into the books as an inadvertent whistle. And I'm surprised that they would review it if, in fact, they did blow the whistle. So the point may be, Ron, without laboring this out, maybe they didn't blow the whistle. It was a forward pass that fell to the ground. No. Incomplete pass. The play stands is called. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to start off arguing with these gentlemen. There's no way that's a forward pass. That is behind the line of scrimmage. Anyway, it's a boot point now. It was whistled dead, and they have said that it was a forward pass. So we'll just leave it at that. Break for Virginia. And if you're one. going to get the upset, yeah. you need some breaks, and they've had some breaks early in this game. Second down and 20. They got to take it all the way down to the Florida State 33 yard line. Hagan's deep in the pocket now. Here comes pressure. Runs up and he'll be tackled at midfield. Let's take a look at the defensive lineups. We have not been able to do that just yet for the Seminoles. And boy, this is a very big and talented group. And Bunkley, the left tackle, is the man that the coaching staff is just saying. What a pleasant surprise. A.J. Nicholson, remember the game he had last time we had him on? Two interceptions, one for a touchdown, and 19 tackles. Pretty doggone good evening. Carter, Watkins, Hall, and Bryant in the secondary. Tony, only 5'9", and they picked on him early tonight, and he's already picked up a couple of pass interference penalties. Here comes the blitz off the corner. Hagan's running for his life. Got by the first wave, and this ball is caught by Byers. Emmanuel Byers, where did he come from? High in the air. Roger Williams was there thinking that the ball was going to be overthrown, and it's good for 28 yards. And Tony Carter 
made the cardinal sin as a defensive back. Don't undercut and go for the interception unless you can make the interception. It all starts with the pressure right here. Church flushes him out of the pocket. But watch Tony Carter undercut and go for the interception. Misjudges the throw, and Emmanuel Byers comes up with the play. That's the reason Bob talked so strongly about Marcus Higgins, the guy that his teammates call Biscuit. I mean, he, he is one great athlete and competitor for the end zone. Did he get the catch? Yes, and it's touchdown Stupar. Jonathan Stupar, the tight end. 21 yards, and hello. Do we have another of those upsets in the making? You mentioned the escapability of the quarterback. Marcus Hakins makes this play. How about this throw? His foot was in bounds, but the escapability of the quarterback, Marcus Hakins, and man-to-man -man coverage, Ernie Sims on the tight end. Extra point by Connor Hughes is up, and it's good. So, touchdown, Stupar, the tight end, makes the reception. And a perfectly thrown ball by the quarterback, Marcus Higgins, will go to break, 7-0. And the Cavaliers with a stunner here in this opening quarter. Well, the student section here at, uh, at UVA, as you can imagine, uh, extremely excited for the happenings of that, uh, that first drive by the Cavaliers tonight. You look at Stupar, and by the way, it is his first collegiate touchdown. Six plays, 71 yards, 2 minutes and 40 seconds off the clock. 24 yards in penalties against Florida State during that drive and a huge third down conversion as well. Bob. And it all started with the Drew Weatherford interception. Virginia gets the turnover as Florida State's moving the ball on their first drive. Here's Smith's kickoff. This one is very deep. Going to go out of the back of the end zone. And the Seminoles will scrimmage from the Rome 20. Ron, I want to show you how tough it is on this linebacker right here, Sims. Watch him cover the tight end man-to-man -man stupa. Watch how long he has to play man-to-man -man coverage because of the escapability of Marcus Higgins. Look how long this play takes. Tough matchup for the linebacker. And you know, but, a, but a great throw by Marcus Higgins. I said it, oh, it was. He is a dynamic football player. Uh, exactly. And and, and speechless and actually, a little bit there for a second. You can't blame Sims either because actually it's a pretty darn good cover job. Straight up the middle, Lorenzo Booker in the ball game and. He uh, is going to take it for a gain of about three and a half, four yards on the play. And if you're Florida State, I guess the frustrating thing early, I mean, that opening drive, they came out just like they had been on fire. We're moving the football right down the field. But then the blitz, and it was Kai Parham put an asterisk by his name because he's the fella who caused Weatherford to throw the ball too quickly and throw it high. There's a look at Kai right there, number 44. He's a junior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Second down. Weatherford deep in the pocket. Right over the middle. And whoa, the hit comes quickly on Hinshaw. The tight end. And it's Kai Parham, the young man that we were just talking about. And the keys, Ron, for Florida State on offense, the first thing, spread them out from sideline to sideline. Make them tackle in the open field. The second thing, if you're Florida State, protect the quarterback. Florida State does not have a great offensive line. Wake Forest splits them. The third thing, throw jump balls. But if you're going to throw them, throw them to number 89, Greg Carr. Nine catches, but five touchdowns. That's an incredible percentage. You see the blitz coming right at the middle on third down and short. Weatherford got it out on the flat complete. That's good for the first down to the Cody Fag. And I believe that's what four catches for the young man already as Sinton is out there to make the tackle, the outside linebacker on the right. Ron, did you do the game in 1995 here? No. In Charlottesville? No, I did not, but I was watching it. And uh, and it was it was oh so close. And I remember reading Coach Bowden's lips saying, did he not get in? And, of course, it will show you that video before the night's over. It was Warwick Dunn who was scrambling his way for the end zone, which is the north end zone, right behind where they are right now. Weatherford throws this one incomplete, Booker. Isn't it amazing, though, what one win over an opponent like Florida State 
can do for an entire football program and a community here in Charlottesville. All they're talking about is 1995. I think Florida State's won 12 of the 13 matchups. Yeah. I think they've won nine in a row. They've won four straight here in Charlottesville. But everybody talks about 1995. What a huge win this would be for a struggling Virginia There's Mike program. Rowe. He was the quarterback then. And we, I did do some Virginia games when Mike was uh, the signal caller here. But that was a night that he will always remember, I can promise you. Second down and 10. Again from the shotgun, Weatherford got a man right over the middle, and that's the tight end, Henshaw. And let's go down to the sideline. Holly Rowe, what do you got for us? Well, you know that Drew Weatherford is just a redshirt uh, freshman, but he's shown remarkable composure for the Seminoles. In fact, the coaching staff says they forgot how young he was. They got so confident in him so quickly that they kind of overloaded him last week with some offensive plays. Coach Jeff Bowden told us that they noticed he was playing a little bit slow, so they've cut back on his offensive package a little bit this week so he can be mentally sharp, not have to think too much, and play quickly. After all, he is just a freshman. <laughs> Well, you know, Holly, he didn't start off that way tonight. He did throw the pick, but he's 7 of 9 uh, to begin this ball game. They go with a pitch, and they'll turn the corner. Not only a first down, but a lot more. Lorenzo Booker down the sideline. 10, 5, touchdown, Florida State, 58 yards. And Al Gro can only look on in disbelief. And I can see why you look on in disbelief. He's saying it can't be that easy. They just toss the ball. They get a great crack back block right there. And I mean, Ron, he goes untouched. Excellent block at the point of attack by Matt Henshaw, number 14, the tight end. But then it is off to the races after that. Extra point attempt. Sismatia is good as he knocks it home. And I'll tell you what, also give credit to big number 62. Corey Niblock was out front. We'll show you in just a minute. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Polaroid and in part by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Monticello, located, of course, here in Charlottesville, Virginia, a favorite uh, tourist spot where uh, Mr. Jefferson used to look through his long telescope and make sure that they were building his university properly. Six plays, 80 yards, two minutes and 24 seconds. And how about this for Booker? The 58-yard touchdown run is the longest of his career. And when Bob shows you here in a minute, you can understand. I mean untouched. And that just doesn't happen a lot in college football. Good kick going to be returnable from the one-yard line. This is Pierman up the right side, 20-25. And he crosses the 35-yard line. That's a great job of hustle. 37 yards on the return. The first thing on this play, they're going to get a block by Donnie Carter, the tight end. I said Henshaw. The second thing they're going to get is Corey Niblock, the lineman, pulling. But there's really no one for him to block. But, Ron, the beauty of this, we had Florida State against Boston College. We said that the Florida State coaches went and visited Norm Chow, who's now at the Tennessee Titans. That is an old USC Reggie Bush play. But Donnie Carter gets the block at the point of attack. And your big guy Niblock pulled out there. But there was no meat on the bone. I don't well, think there was, was anyone to block. No, it was. Jamal Jackson, he had to, well, he, had to hit him. He got in the way a little bit. I'll give you, I'll give you the credit for <laughs> he that. He got in the way a lot. Come on. <laughs> right over the middle. Got it complete. And oh, my goodness, what a hit. Santee makes the reception. But I'll tell you what, Marcus Higgins is making sure we don't get to take a breath up here. 24 yards on the play. Pat Watkins on the hit. You're going to watch Santi right from the line of scrimmage right here. And this is a great lick right there by Pat Watkins, 22. And how about Santi, Ron, holding on to the football right there. Almost got dislodged, but he held on. Did a great job securing that ball. So the tight ends have played a huge part of the offense so far tonight draw play this is Lunday and Wally's going to take it to around the 35 been a little bit of a frustrating year for this youngster who's a senior out of Willingboro New Jersey he got a foot injury and it's a nagging kind of injury uh, just early early on he has not been able to shake it visited with him yesterday and he said I'm not 100 percent but I'm just excited to be able to play in this ball game and you can see why he's frustrated for three straight years he had over 800 yards rushing he's got 40 touchdowns in his career but he's hurt 
Hagan sets deep in the pocket. He's going to go long, and he's got a man just beyond the outstretched hands of Dayon Williams. And as I said on the introduction of the players, he's the flyer. He's the one who can beat Florida State. And we said if Florida State has a weakness, it's at corner again, Tony Carter. And this looks like a Florida State play. Just throw it down the field, and Ron, you have to have that one, in my opinion, if you're going to upset the number four team in the country. They had it. Well, a, a favorite expression. You, you hear coaches talk about it. You hear players talk about it. Teams like Florida State don't give you a lot of opportunities, but when they do, you better gobble it up. Better take advantage. Third down, and they need to take it to the 27. Hagan, screen pass right back into the middle, and that's Michael Johnson only with a gain of about one, maybe two on the play, and it's going to be fourth down. And there's no question Virginia's working on Tony Carter. Tony Carter is five foot nine. Mickey Andrews loves this guy. Said he's the best corner he has on this football team. Said he doesn't play like a little guy, but he is struggling here tonight. And Virginia keeps going after number 15. But you know the great ones, and this kid's a great one, he'll bounce back. Tonight's kick chart is brought to you by Allstate. Connor Hughes, the longest one that he has had, is 43 yards. This is a 50-yard attempt, and he's got plenty of distance. Is it true? You bet. 50 yards on the field goal. So let's take a timeout and our new score as you take one more look at Connor Hughes with this 50-yard field goal. 10-7, Cavaliers on top. So we are back in uh, Charlottesville. Let me correct one thing I said. I said Connor Hughes, his longest 43 yards. That is, I meant this season. His longest as far as career was 53 yards against Wake Forest. And that was a year before last. And as you could see in that 50-yarder he just booted, uh, he's got plenty of leg for 50 and beyond because his numbers, he is 5 of 8, Bob, from 50 yards or better. And that's a really high percentage. That is a tremendous percentage. Kirk Smith's going to kick it off. So the Cavaliers come right back with the field goal and go back on top of the ball game. They let it 7 0, then Florida State tied it, and now 10 7. And this kick right here is not returnable. So, you know, Bob, one of the things that we talked about off the top of this telecast is what a great day in college football. How many close, you know, <laughs> almost traumatic <laughs> situations at the end. And we've got one mounting right here. Great they, day in college football. They were great finishes today. Maybe great finish here tonight. You kind of feel the atmosphere in the air tonight in Charlottesville. Maybe 1995. Great day. Maybe we have a great night as well in photo finishes. Well, Notre Dame was a photo finish. Uh, Penn State, Michigan, a photo finish. And, and Lloyd Carr saying, heck, I've already lost three ball games. I don't need any more photo finishes unless it's me doing the photo. And you also look at Minnesota, their game this afternoon against Wisconsin and Boston College, yep. Wake Forest, all kind of strong finishes today. Alabama Ole Miss, the same thing. Going to run a little reverse here. That's Chris Davis hit behind the line of scrimmage. And Chris is going to be stopped for about a four-yard loss in the play by Mark Miller, number 47. And he, he is uh, a senior out of Birmingham. And Ron, I think this Virginia defense has their work cut out for them tonight. Obviously, Florida State, a hot football team. But Virginia with some injuries, some depletions in the secondary. Because of that, they really cannot play any man-to-man -man coverage. They're about two corners short, so they're going to play a lot of zone. And I think open field tackling is the key for this football team tonight. I'm talking about Virginia's defense. Kai Parham, number 44, one of the team captains on defense. You could see him getting everybody lined up properly, number 44. Right over the middle, got this pass complete, and that's Reed, Willie Reed. Now they have hit him right down the middle on a couple of pass plays. Mike Brown puts the stop, but it's a gain of 25 on the play. And Willie Reed... I'm going to give him an endorsement for you, Ron. I asked Mickey Andrews, who's the defensive coordinator at Florida State, who's your favorite receiver? He said Willie Reed. So you know one thing? He is a tough, <laughs> tough little football player. When the defensive coordinator looks at him and said, this kid right here gives us more trouble than anybody, you know he's good. Quick pass out. Got that one to uh, Kenny O'Neill. 
short of the first down. You can see he's going to miss it by about three yards. And let's check down on the sideline again and visit with Holly Rowe. Holly? Well, guys, one of the things that Bobby Bowden thought going into this season is that his team was so young, he was concerned about how consistent they would be. And he said, I, frankly, I'm surprised. He said they are much more mature than I gave him credit for. He said players aren't late to meetings. Players aren't late for the team bus. And the leadership they have in some of their seniors has been very vocal. That if guys were late, they get them straightened right out. He likes how they're performing. Their maturity has exceeded his expectations. Well, Holly hit behind the line of scrimmage. They're not going to have the first down. In fact, they're going to lose yardage as Centum comes in to uh, mess up everything along with Chris Long. But your point is well taken because Florida State, since we saw them up in Boston, they have just continued to improve each week. Wake Forest showed today that last week's effort was something that was not a fluke. I mean, Wake is a very good football team. They just probably are a little bit undermanned as far as numbers, Bob. And I think it comes down to Florida State's commitment, Ron, to just go to the spread shotgun offense. So much of it with the development of the quarterbacks allowed them to do it. Third down. They need to take it to the 47. They throw the middle screen. They're going to have the first down and a little bit more as Leon Washington is there to receive it. And we talk about this Florida State commitment to the spread. It's what Jeff Bowden, the offensive coordinator, always wanted to do. As you see another little USC play here, the old run and shoot screen. He wanted to go to the spread offense at the beginning of the year. He couldn't because they have a freshman quarterback and they had a team meeting a couple weeks ago. We'll talk about a little bit later when he went to the offensive players and said, what do you want to do? They unanimously said, we want to be a spread offense. By the way, Cornelius Lewis, number 66, a freshman out of Jacksonville, he uh, threw an outstanding block on that play to help them pave the way. They're going to throw it out this time to Washington in the flat. He is flipped at the 30-yard line, but that's going to be very close. In fact, he's going to have the first down. Ahmad Brooks is out there to make the stop. Ahmad, of course, is out of Woodbridge, Woolbridge, uh, Virginia. And they were really depending heavily on him, but a off-season knee surgery really caused him some problems, and he has not been able to play either up to his capabilities or as much time so far this year. And maybe the highest recruited linebacker in the country yeah. his senior year coming out of Woodbridge. He is a big, talented future NFL guy if he can stay healthy. From the 30-yard line, Weatherford near sideline throws this one complete. 81 to Cody Fagg. And this young man's almost at a half dozen receptions already. He's got five. Ron, I want to go back to my story about Jeff Bowden as we see Cody Fagg down on the sidelines. Jeff Bowden's meeting with the offensive players to ask them what they wanted to do. Trust me, this guy knew what he was doing. It's kind of like an attorney. You only ask a question if you know what the answer is going to be. He knew they wanted to go to the spread. He wanted to go to the spread. They were ready from a productivity uh, standpoint and an execution standpoint to do it. And he's made the offensive players have onus in the scheme. But Bobby Bowden and, Je and Jeff Bowden knew what they were doing before they asked that football team, what do you want to do? They already knew the answer. <laughs> Let's take a look at uh, exactly what happened to uh, uh, Dakota Fagg in this play. really hard to see Mark Miller just as he comes down right here he bangs pretty hard on that shoulder and then gets rolled over and he just stayed on the ground and the trainers are still there looking him over and wishful thinking if you're Florida State he did land on that football yeah and so many times you see players get the wind knocked out of him land on that ball. does look like he's protecting that shoulder a little bit though Five receptions for him, 42 yards. The average, 8.4. You could see a lot of the Virginia players crowded around as well to see uh, exactly how badly he was hurt. And a couple of the Virginia players patting him on the back as uh, he headed out with the training staff back over to the other side of the field. You see how big and strong he is. He is Florida State's most improved receiver run and their leading receiver coming into this ball game. Well, he is definitely in some pain the way they're holding that right arm. It is either the upper part of the arm uh, or the shoulder. And we'll uh, we'll find out something here in uh, in just a while. Situation on the field. It is 10-7. Virginia on top. 2.34 to play opening quarter. 
And for Florida State, it's second down. They need to take it down just inside the 20. Blitz coming. They hand it off to Washington. And Leon is spinning off a tackle. Now going to be hit by Kai Parham. And Kai will bring him down for another three or four-yard loss. Parham has been totally outstanding in this first quarter. And I'll tell you what, Clint sent him. The freshman linebacker, number 51, Ron, has a shot at him in the backfield right here. As we let this thing roll, right there had a shot, but we noticed watching tape, Leon Washington is back to the old Leon Washington. Went home this summer to Jacksonville instead of staying in Tallahassee. Came back a little bit overweight, but he is playing himself back into shape. Well, this... Uh... Partisan crowd coming to their feet. It's a third down and 10. This is the ninth play of the drive. It started all the way back at the Florida State 20. Weatherford got a man open and he hit him. Did he stay in bounds? Yes. It is a first and 10 Florida State. And that's Willie Reed with his third catch of the night. 23 yards on this one. And if you give Drew Weatherford protection, you watch right here. Virginia only rushes three. It allows him to step up and he throws the corner route to a wide open Willie Reed. We talked about some injuries in the secondary for, for Virginia. That time they went after the true freshman, Mike Brown, number 28. Greg Carr is coming to the lineup. And if you don't know about Greg Carr, he's the one that Bob talked about. He is 6'6", 203, and the fade route would be absolutely perfect for him right here. Let's see if that's what they do. Weatherford looking. Going to throw back little decoy. Got this one. Lorenzo Booker pinned in at the five-yard line, and that's where he will go down. Well, a very important ACC conference game tonight from Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia. Number four, Florida State trying to maintain their unbeaten record going for their 100th ACC win since joining the conference. Virginia, they have lost three straight games since 2001 to these same Seminoles. Ron Franklin, Bob Davey, Holly Rowe, good to have you along tonight. 11th play of the drive, and you see where the Seminoles are setting up shop. It's a second down and goal from six yards away. Weatherford puts it in the stomach of Booker. And he may have one yard, and that's about it. As Chris Long, number 91, comes in to make the tackle. We're going to get a late flag in the corner of the end zone. Could be an unsportsmanlike conduct. Personal foul. Personal foul, number 30 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. It's going to be late right there. Nate Lyles comes in and just blindsides the offensive lineman from Florida State. And you know, last week, Ron, against Boston College, uncharacteristically, Virginia had 10 penalties in the first half of that game in Boston. So this is a highly penalized team this foot this year. Lorenzo Booker is the lone setback number 28 and he'll give it to him. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage and knocked down for a loss by Brennan Schmidt. The young man we talked about. This is a four year starter. And if he continues this path, he could wind up with like 51 starts in a row. Here's the kick. Very returnable on this one. Spinner, short at the six-yard line. Pierman, 15-20, and is pushed out of bounds at the 22. Let's take a look at the ACC standings, the Dr. Pepper ACC update, and here are the standings. Florida State, perfect. Boston College, huge win today. They're now 6-1, and 3-1 and one in the conference. And then you see as we come down the slate, in the coastal standings, Virginia Tech, perfect. Miami at 5-1, and 2-1 one, and one in conference play. And uh, North Carolina, Virginia at 1-2 and 3-2 and and overall. Al Groves Ball Club off to a very good start in this one tonight, though. J.R. Bryant is coming to ball game at corner, replacing Tony Carter. 
Marcus Higgins hit from behind. He never felt the pressure. First time they've gotten to him. And it's Cameron Wimbley who has had a truly magnificent season so far. And a great high school linebacker. He shows the speed rush from the top. Wow. Bob. And, and let me say this. He was on number 75, Eugene Monroe, who was a true freshman. DeBrickashaw Ferguson had gone to the bench. That is a tough, tough matchup. The sky's the limit for Monroe, but that's a tough matchup tonight as a true freshman. Both of those guys on the left side, in fact, 75 and 71, both are freshman linemen going up against an awfully good Florida State defense. Hagans drills the pass, got it complete. He's close to the first down, and in fact, Covington, I believe, will have it. And Ron, you'll see Marcus Hagans. I ask Al Groh, why don't you do more predetermined quarterback runs with him? Because he is the best running back on this team. The reason they don't, he runs so many bootlegs. He scrambles so well. They have enough quarterback runs without designing quarterback runs. There again, you see, because he can stay alive, beat the pressure. It's tough to cover receivers when the quarterback scrambles. Six of eight. Really good start for Hagans in the one touchdown. They go with a running play right up the middle, has five, has almost ten, and Sims is there to make the stop on Wally Lunday. Let's go down to the sideline and Holly Rowe. Well, after last week's devastating loss at Boston College, Marcus Hagens was a beaten man. His coach, Al Groh from Virginia, took him aside and said, look, you can feel the responsibility of being a quarterback, but you can't show it to your team. You have got to carry yourself like you're not defeated. And Marcus really took it to heart. He showed up Monday in Coach Groh's office with a piece of paper that he had written down what it would take to win this game. His number one thing, practice like we can win. His enthusiasm, he says, he thinks carried over to his teammates. Okay, Holly. And that is one of the things that Al Groh's been trying to create with this team, and that is to work out like you play, like you know you can win. Wembley and Nicholson forcing him out of bounds on that play. You see Higgins come up limping in there a little bit, but, you know, signed with Indiana out of high school, was going to be the next Marcus Randall L. Was a non-qualifier, went to Fork Union. And we'll see right here. He's going to pull up a little bit, being chased by Cameron Wimbley. You can see the grimace right there, and I hope that's not a hamstring. Because all of a sudden, as you watch Olsen, Christian Olsen, a junior out of Wayne, New Jersey, moving down the sideline with the football. And they will keep a close eye on Marcus Higgins and see if he is able to stay in this football game. Short drop this time, steps up, looking, and he barely gets it away, and he gets it complete at the 45 yard line and Higgins is down and he is still grabbing at the back side of that right leg Fontel Mines made the catch and it's good for 16 yards what a courageous young competitor not a good team to have two freshman linemen in there on offense or a bad hamstring but he stays alive right here makes a play and he is such a huge part, obviously, of this offense, Virginia. And running is such a key ingredient in his game, Ron. We have to keep an eye on that hamstring. But what a courageous young guy. That was Marcelo Church who was putting the pressure on. Number 39, senior out of St. Petersburg. First down. Sets in the pocket. They pick up the blitz. Now he's going to run. And actually, it's not a run. It's a limp. You could see him hop that last two yards. But he picks up five on the play. Church again making the defensive play. Again, you see why they don't have predetermined quarterback runs. He gets enough runs on his own. But how about this guy getting his degree in anthropology here at Virginia, which is really like an Ivy League school, a non-qualifier out of high school, degree in anthropology, great career for this kid. There you see his career numbers, nine touchdowns, six interceptions, 60% on his completion ratio. Second down, they need to take it just inside the 35 of Florida State. 
Good protection. Lobs a pass. Got it complete right over the middle. Stupar, who caught the touchdown pass. And boy, the tight ends have been huge in the offensive attack tonight. That's good for 24 as Roger Williams came over to make the tackle Florida State. You mentioned tight ends in Virginia's program are huge. Think of Heath Miller last year, first round draft pick. Wide open across the middle. Stupar, young guy Ron out of State College, PA. Not recruited by Penn State, but is an excellent young sophomore well, prospect here at Virginia. His dad played at Penn State, right? He did. Here's a running play with Lundy. Wally is going to be stopped after a gain of just a couple. Holly Road, let's check down on the sideline with you. Well, guys, it's almost a miracle that Jonathan Stupar is even playing college football right now. After he broke his foot, he uh, talked to his trainers and said, you know, I've got this broken foot. And how's it doing? But by the way, I've had some fainting spells. They actually took him in for some heart tests. He ended up having to have open heart surgery. And guys, uh, he said it was a very, very dangerous surgery, that there was a chance that he would not recover from that. But now he's back just a few, uh, about six months later, playing college football. So it's quite a miracle. It really is a miracle. And he has, he has shown tonight that he is perfectly fine. Straight ahead with the running play. And you see quickly, Michael Johnson just disappears. Covered in garnet, gold, and white. Ron, when you're Florida State, an attacking style defense that loves to run those defensive linemen up the field, you have to play a quarterback like Marcus Higgins a little bit different. Sometimes just penetrate opens up lanes for that quarterback to scramble. You almost have to put a net around him and be a little more cautious and stay in your rush lanes if you're Florida State because this guy will wear you out just scrambling with the football. Mickey Andrews, good shot of him on the sideline as you look at some of the defenders for the Florida State Seminoles. Third down, and the line to make is down at the 10. Some movement early. The running play by Lundy is not going to go very far. And there were no flags thrown, but I agree with the crowd. I thought that there was movement in the line of scrimmage and that there was encroachment. Well, I think what they're really booing about is that call right there, Ron, on third down and long, the conservative call set up the field goal. Al Groh must have a lot of confidence in his defense to be able to slow down this Florida State because I don't think 13 points going to beat the Seminoles tonight. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But also, he doesn't want to get one picked trying to bite off too much. Here's the attempt by Hughes, and he's got another one. That's going to be from 37 yards. So let's take a timeout with our new score, 8.59 left until halftime, but it's Virginia, 13-10. This crowd is standing and cheering because Florida State's going to be scrimmaging with virtually everybody standing in the end zone. Play action. They're going to go on top. Trying to put up a big number here. And it's intercepted by Gorham. Chris Gorham. Whew, the plot thickens. The thing we've commented on, you're going to see Fred Rouse, the dynamic freshman receiver at the top of the field. The thing that Drew Rutherford has done a tremendous job is putting air underneath the football. Excuse me, that's Kenny O'Neill, number four. But the thing Drew Rutherford has done all year round, he has put enough air under that football to let those tall talent receivers go get it. That time he underthrew the ball. And now the crowd kind of likes Al Groh's decision to punt the ball in the last <laughs> series instead of going for the long field goal. Yeah. And that's the reason the head coaches make the big bucks. So a situation here with three minutes and 13 seconds left until halftime. It's going to be a halfback pass. He's throwing it back to Hagen, and the ball is tipped and almost intercepted by Gerald Ross. Wally Lundy is the man who threw it. And Bob, as they rehearsed that play on Thursday, I jokingly said to the sports information director who was standing next to me, he put way too much air under that because Florida State's quick enough to get back, react, and make the interception. And that play was set up. What it's going to be, they're going to start the sweep to Wally Lundy. Florida State, a man-to-man -man coverage team right here. If we stop it, he is wide open, but Wally takes too long and puts too much air under the football. But he did have some penetration in defense to Wally Lundy right there. But that play was there early. Michael Johnson now sets up as the tailback. 
Higgins deep in the pocket over the middle got it complete and again Stupar the tight end Reese Davis let's check back with you. Okay, and let me tell you something, Reese. We're working on another one for you to talk about after our final 30 minutes of this one. I think this one's coming down to the wire. Another trick play. Backwards pass, throws it forward, had a man open, and he just barely overthrew it. That's twice tonight. Emmanuel Byers has been used as the quarterback. Ottawa Anderson is the man he was looking for. But well, I'll tell you one thing. They've emptied the bag <laughs> on throws by someone other than the quarterback. Maybe I'm conservative, but I kind of like Marcus Higgins going back to pass run. And if it's not open, scramble. I think Al's checking that one off his list right there. But right here, the ball is thrown backwards, so obviously you can have a double pass. And he was there if he just didn't lead him quite so much. Michael Johnson, the tailback again. And on second down, Hagan swings it out, got it to Johnson. Now here comes great pursuit on the part of Florida State. And that will go for a short gain as Carter was the first man to get out and make the tackle. Mickey Andrews standing on the sideline, continuing to signal in exactly what they're looking for on defense. Florida State Ron puts Willie Jones number six in as the right defensive end. This guy has an arthritic hip only used in passing situations only used in special circumstances. Really a great story for Florida State. Well, his father played there also his father Willie that was a great player at Florida State. Running play not much for Michael Johnson on third down and ten and boy listen to the booze down below but. Again, Al Groh has tried two trick plays on this series. Nothing worked there, so he ran it back toward the middle of the field. Williams made the tackle, and they will try for another field goal by Connor Hughes. And a great timeout, Ron, right there by Florida State. So let's take a timeout. They already lead it by three. We'll be right back. So we are back. A minute 33 seconds showing on the clock until halftime and Connor Hughes comes out to attempt this field goal and Big E where is this thing going to be placed now. Looks like at about the what 25 yard line so we're going to say a 35 He's already hit a 50 and a 37 you see not quite on the right hash. Good pass plenty of distance and he is good. In 1995, Virginia was the first team to beat Florida State in ACC play. Who was the second? Let me look this up for you. North Carolina State was the second team. What year? I don't have my <laughs> reading glasses on. I can't read it. But I just heard through the headset it was 1998. So NC State 1998. Well, I'm glad we're not in the classroom. There's more cheating going on here than, than I can imagine. NC State 1998. Yeah. That's when they picked off Chris Winkie six times in winning that ball game 24 to 7. Kurt Smith prepares to kick it off for the Cavaliers. I'm going to have to give you one more stat, Ron. I found in that encyclopedia. Bobby Bowden is 201 and 1 when Florida State scores more than 30 points. Now, is that an unbelievable stat? Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to bring you another stat. The only one that he lost in scoring more than that, he led by 35 points in a ball game. And he said one of the reasons, as you watch this kick go out the back of the end zone, when he learned at a very early age, you don't ever call the dogs up because he had 35 points, called the dogs off, and lost the football game. Wow. Get him to talk about it sometime. He said <laughs> it was the saddest moment of my life. And how about last week we had Joe Paterno, this week Bobby Bowden, both of them 40 years as head coaches. I'm going to make this prediction or this assessment. 
Bobby won't admit this, Joe won't admit this, but I promise you they have one eye on each other. Bobby comes in with 556 wins, Joe 349. It'd be a heck of a deal to be the all-time winningest coach in college football. They have one eye on each other now. <laughs> Lorenzo Booker, the setback with Weatherford. Hit as he throws, and the ball almost intercepted. I mean, in and out of the hands of Ryan Best. Ryan is one of those young faces that is getting a chance to play because Al is trying to add some depth. Because he has lost several the last two games in the fourth quarter. He wants to play a lot of young guys, so they're an energized football team in the fourth quarter. But that young guy would like to have that one back. But good plan right now by Al Grove because he is getting a lot of guys on that field. 125 showing until intermission. Fred Rouse split wide to the right. Number one, speedy freshman out of Tallahassee. Pressure, Weatherford is sacked. Back at the 13-yard line, it's Kai Parham who continues to impress in this first half on the defensive side of the ball for the Cavaliers. I want you to watch Brennan Schmidt right here. He is just going to run by the offensive tackle. They just flat turn him loose, Ron. And we talk about Florida State's problems. As you mentioned, Kai Parham gets the sack. They just turned him loose that time. So we'll take a timeout. 16 to 10. Our score continues. 117 left until halftime. So we're back. Short timeout. 30 seconds. Third down for the Seminoles. And they need to take this all the way out to the 30-yard line if they're going to keep this drive going. Been a great day in college football, which the guys will bring you up to date on at halftime. And we got another one going right here in Charlottesville. Florida State, 6 of 8 on third down conversions. Drew Weatherford, the freshman, deep drop, far sideline, has his pass, it's overthrown. Willie Reed, the intended receiver. Vince Red was the man who was out there with the pressure. And Ron, again, tremendous pressure by Virginia. You're going to see Vince Red at the top of the screen. They're only rushing four guys. And boy, Drew Weatherford is taking a pounding. And Virginia in great position because they still have two timeouts left in the first half. Second punt of the night by Chris Hall of Florida State, the senior out of Centerville, Virginia, averaging 42 yards a punt. This one not real long. In fact, it's not going to turn over, and it is being caught, and fair caught by Byers. 28 yards on the kick. So the Cavaliers on the short punt with an opportunity to maybe pick up more yards and more points. See the numbers on the two quarterbacks. Two interceptions now for Weatherford. Hagan's got a man, hits him out of bounds at the 20. That's Dayon Williams. Now, with the leg of Connor Hughes, they're almost guaranteed three points off this trip right here. And with two timeouts left, Ron, time is really not significant. But Dayon Williams that time matched up on Roger Williams, the safety and great protection by Virginia. A look at Connor Hughes on the sideline. He's already made field goals of 50, 37, and 35. He's accounted for nine points in this ball game of the 16. Wally Lundy checks back into the ball game at tailback. Pass thrown to the tight end, complete Stupar right over the middle. Short yardage on that one. Actually, Santee, number 86, rather than Stupar, 88. Well, they've got it in the middle of the field now. They're down to 47, now 46. 
I'm a little surprised right here, Ron, that Virginia doesn't pick the tempo up a little bit. They're not using one of those timeouts, but no reason to really labor in that huddle. And a little surprised they're in eye backs right here. Which means, of course, Marcus Higgins will go under center. Straight drop. Runs out of the pocket. Throws the ball complete. Lunday at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown, Virginia. 16 yards. Ernie Sims and Buster Davis were all over Marcus Hagans and what Bob's been talking about all night. The escapability of Hagans has just been a thorn in the side of the Seminoles. It's 22 to 10 with the extra point attempt to come. Tough to defend a dynamic scrambling quarterback like Hagans. Here's the kick and he's got it. It's going to send some shockwaves across the country when this score for halftime goes out. One more look. And let's watch Marcus Higgins. Wally Lundy's just a little check down right here. But how about getting the football to the check down as you see the two linebackers, Buster Davis and Ernie Sims in the backfield. That is a big time play right there by that quarterback. And really, Ron, no way to defend that in fairness to Florida State because the quarterback is creating yes. plays yeah. on his own. And, you know, I tell you, from, from all the kids from, from uh, UVA to score that has really been laboring with, with an injury, Wally Lundy's a good football player, and he has not been able to perform up to his perfection or his expectation. And you see the drive, three plays, 43 yards in 49 seconds. So Lundy with a huge touchdown. You look at Wally on the bench right there. It makes it 23 to 10, and we have 19 seconds left until halftime. When you talk about that Tidewater area, the name Marcus Vick, that quarterback that came out of that Tidewater area, the younger Vick at Virginia Tech, Ronald the, Curry. There's been a bunch of them. This the is Adibi another brothers, one. The Adibi brothers at Virginia Tech. One is there now. There was one uh, just a couple of years ago. That, uh, that that area code <laughs> has produced some really good football players. And Allen Iverson, another great high school quarterback out of that same Tidewater area. And they have to be proud of their homeboy, Marcus Higgins, tonight now. Kurt Smith to kick it off. Oh, this is a dandy kick right here. It's going to go out of the back of the end zone. Well, here are some other players that uh, have come out of that area. Aaron Brooks. Michael Vick. You see the teams that they're with now. The Oakland Raiders. Uh, Curry. Of course, uh, basketball slash football player in North Carolina. Marcus Vick, the younger Vick. Mm -hmm. Where's my man Allen Iverson? We must have him on the point guard chart or graphic. That's a turnover on our part. <laughs> and Florida State's not going to take a chance on committing any more mental errors. They're going to take a knee and head to the locker room. So our score at halftime is Virginia 23, Florida State 10. Except this is very much the same setting, you know, and uh, we, we nearly pulled that one out. Now we need to pull this one out. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. So on first down, here comes the pressure. Higgins gets away, delivers the pass, and throws it complete. Boy, I'll tell you, he uh, he may have never had a better start in a ball game than he's got in this one tonight. And that infectious smile. <laughs> He's causing a lot of people to enjoy that tonight, Bob. He is having fun. Reminds me of Joe Hamilton of Georgia Tech. Maybe Reggie, but uh, Joe Hamilton, yeah, of Georgia Tech, and also Reggie Ball. But that said it all right there, that play. That's exactly what happened all first half long. Look at those numbers. 17 of 21, 235 yards, and two touchdowns. Good protection. Zings this one over the middle. Got it complete. And that is to Fontel Mines. And another first down. Good for 12 yards. And Fontel Mines at six foot four is going to come down and just run a little curl route and great delivery. 
Boy, that is a well-timed throw right there by the quarterback, and you just see the confidence right there. Again, Tony Carter, the corner, matched up on Fontel Mines. Carter uh, has been severely picked on tonight, I think is the nicest way you could put it. Hagan short drop this time. Here comes pressure. They flush him. Gets it across the body. It is intercepted by A.J. Nicholson. Nicholson still running inside the 40, and he's down to the 39-yard line. What is it about Saturday primetime and A.J. Nicholson? Two interceptions up at uh, Boston College, and now one here tonight, and there is a flag down on the near side of the field. Let's see if it's after the play or before. It is going to be roughing the passer against Florida State. Erase the interception. You're going to see Hagan scramble to his left right here, throw back across his body. Obviously, it goes without saying. That's a huge penalty, and that was a very, very close call right there on Ernie Sims. I'd like to take one more look at that if we could possibly because that is a huge penalty because it's a change of possession penalty. Let's look at it again here late. Hagan's running to his left. It's late. Not vicious run, but late. Ernie Sims had plenty of time to get off his course and not run in to Marcus Hagan's. So instead of Florida State having the ball uh, inside the 40, it is a first down and a dropped pass at the 30-yard line. Supar, one of the few things that uh, he has not done really well tonight. But the new line of scrimmage is at the 41-yard line of Florida State. And Ernie Sims comes back and almost redeems himself right here as again Virginia goes to the tight end. Ernie Sims went up high enough. It looked like he extended his arms, though, Ron, to intercept that ball. But this kid right here is a missile on that football field. He, is, he, he will make up for that late hit on that quarterback. You see his father uh, played uh, football, and his mom ran track at Florida State. Here comes Blitz. They go with the draw play, and Lundy caught in traffic. He's going to have a gain of about two, two and a half yards, and that will be third down and long. One of the things that Florida State did not do a great deal of in the first half, Bob, was dictating, particularly having a third and long situation and dictating more of the way Virginia called the football game. And a defense that's a little bit on their heels, gave up 415 yards last week and no turnovers against Wake Forest. Third down, they need to take it down to the 31, a movement on the offensive line. Prior to the snap, full start. 78 of the offense. Five yards, still third down. Marshall Osbury, sophomore out of Springfield, Virginia, is the man who moved too quickly. So the five yards stepped off, and now it'll be third down and 13. And again, the pass rush right here for Florida State. You have to get up the field and rush, but you also cannot create running lanes or scramble lanes for Marcus Hagan. So a bit of a controlled rush and just keep him in that pocket, Ron. Wembley, Burston, Bunkley. Keep an eye on every one of them. Here comes pressure. Hagan runs up into the pocket, gets a block, gets the pass away, and he throws it complete. That's going to be enough for the first down today on Williams, just inside the 30-yard line. And interesting that time, Mickey Andrews using a spy. I want you to watch number 54, Nicholson, the linebacker, just spying on the quarterback. He's right here. So they're taking a linebacker and spying to keep him from scrambling. But again, Hagan's an unbelievable job, Ron, of throwing that football off the scramble. Deion Williams, a junior out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. So he moves the chains. First down, draw play. And that's Wally Lundy going to go for short yardage, a gain of a yard and a half 
Holly Rowe, let's check with you down on the sideline. Well, guys, I spoke with Virginia's trainer, Ethan Saliba, at halftime and asked him how Marcus Higgins was treated for that hamstring pull. He said the most important thing they did was keep him on the bike the entire 20-minute period because they need it to keep loose. They don't want it to tighten up and get stiff. Now, he is limping a little bit more now than he was in the first half, so it appears to be tightening up somewhat. But, guys, Al Gross said they're not going to play like he's hurt. They're just going to keep calling what they have to call and see what he can do. Well, with that heart, he'll, he'll run it to the best of his ability. You can be assured of that. Boy, on the boot, great staying at home. They're going to press him out of the pocket, and he just throws that one away very wisely. And Marcelo Church, who has done a good job of chasing the quarterback all night long, and you see the smile on his face rather than uh, a grimace. But that's the kind of kid that Marcus Higgins is. Well, then he put that icy hot on that hamstring at halftime. Holly forgot that in the first half. The key was the icy hot on the sidelines. But you talk about big penalties, Ron. You're always going to have penalties. To think of Florida State, a holding penalty in the first half brings back a touchdown and a late hit on the quarterback by Ernie Sims changes possession where it would have been Florida State ball. So two huge penalties in this game. Eighth play. It started back at the 20 yard line. Higgins short drop this time and drills the pass in and out of the hands of his receiver who is Deion Williams. Deion will go over to the bench for a couple of seconds and uh, brings up a fourth down and a very busy guy is uh, Connor Hughes. He's already got three tonight 50 37 and 35. He stayed on the field a long time during that delay and worked on the kicks from around 50 to 52 yards. This one's going to be 45. The attempt just inside that right hash mark. Good pass, plenty of distance. Make it four field goals on the night. 26 to 10. Virginia extends their lead. Just over 11 to play, third quarter. Well, all of the Who's are enjoying this one. All ages, I mean. 26 to 10. And by the way, uh, here's a, a stat for you that uh, obviously Bobby Bowden's ball club can uh, catch on fire offensively and, and make a difference when you look at Connor Hughes, 291 career points, 14 tonight. School record is uh, 293, so within two points of it. But that margin of uh, 26 to 10, that's the largest margin that Coach Bowden's club has trailed this year. They trail by three at Boston College. with the kick. This one is fumbled in the end zone. He can go down on one knee and he'll take it at the 20. Reese Davis, let's uh, check back with you. Carl's Ball Club has really uh, rebounded from a, an okay year last year. Undefeated right now. Our situation, 26 to 10, and the first time in the second half that Florida State will have worked on offense. Weatherford gives it to Leon Washington. Leon's going to take it for a gain of very close to five out at the 25-yard line. Ron, the thing that's been so impressive about Drew Weatherford up until the first half of this game is just the constant improvement he's made, the steady improvement each week. You look at right there, the first quarter, 14 for 16, started off hot. The interception seems to have lost confidence, but pass protection again. He's, their offensive line has struggled giving him time to throw the football. 11 minutes left to play third quarter. The Seminoles need to get something going. They go with the Washington. Going to be hit with an ankle high tackle. It'll be a gain of three and a half. Marcus Hamilton was there to put the stop on him. And now the, the Noles are going to have to come up with a third down and short to hold on to the football. And I have really been impressed with the job this Virginia defense has done. Al Golden, the defensive coordinator. They've been limited. They have some injuries. They can't play man to man, but they have done an excellent job of just pressuring the quarterback without blitzing. I think that's been key for this Virginia defense. Well, here's the play. Actually, from the spot, they need about a yard. David Castillo out over the football. 
From the shotgun, blitz off the corner, pass is caught. Not only a first down, but hello, Greg Carr. <laughs> I hate to sound like I'm jumping on the bandwagon like just a regular fan, but I mean, when you got this guy, nobody's been able to stop him yet, so I think I'd keep going to the well until somebody did stop him. And Virginia huh? comes with the zone blitz. Weatherford just throws it underneath, and how about that is six foot six. He better learn to tuck that ball away a little bit, <laughs> but he is fun to watch. Again, it's zone coverage underneath. Ahmad Brooks had an opportunity right there. So on first down, they give it back to Leon Washington, has five, has ten, bounces it outside. It's going to be a gain of about 13 yards. Hamilton saved a really big gainer. And we mentioned back in the first half, Leon Washington came back just a tad heavy this year and did not seem to have the same kind of quickness that he has had in the past. Well, he's taken off 10 pounds or 11, and uh, boy, the coaches are happy, and you can see why the way he's running. Florida State first down at the Virginia 49. Gives it to Washington again. Slices off left tackle. Not much there. That's Chris Long, number 91, the sophomore out of Ivy, Virginia, who's there to make the stop. It's interesting. Keep in mind this Virginia defense. You see him substituting a lot of players here. They have been ahead in the fourth quarter in their two previous football games and have lost both. You see Al Gross substituting players because he knows this Florida State offense is going, isn't going to go away. There's a lot of snaps left in this game. Kai Parham, number 44, has had such an outstanding first half. Comes to the sideline to get a breather. Short drop. Weatherford dumps it off right over the middle. This is Lorenzo Booker. And Lorenzo's going to be tackled at the 41. It'll be third down, and they still will need about two yards. Ryan Best came over to make the tackle along with Jackson. And you see again, those running backs are really just the fifth wide receiver on the field for Florida State. As you see Lorenzo Booker show that quickness. So Booker goes to the bench. Leon Washington back into the lineup. Third down. They need the 39 yard line to keep this one going. Pass caught right over the middle, and uh, that's Donnie Carter. The tight end came to the Seminoles as a defensive lineman, and he makes that stop 6 4, makes the catch 265 pounds. Kai Parham, who is down with an injury for Virginia, and a young man that, as we mentioned just a moment ago, really had a Good 30 minutes that first half. He was everywhere, doing a little bit of everything. See if we can find out exactly what happened on this replay. Got hit by his own man. And you see that helmet snap back. But Kai Parham, Ron, this guy is a physical specimen. Reminds me of a lot of a linebacker I had at Texas A&M. You remember this name, Quentin Coria. Yep. That same kind of body. He is a big, good-looking football player. Leon Washington back in the ball game at tailback. Florida State lines up instead of four wideouts. They got two tight ends and they pull Niblock the tackle. Same play that they got the long score on early in the ball game, and this one's going to go for a much shorter distance as Sintum is out there to make the stop. Holly Rowe, let's check down on the sideline with you. Guys, one of the things you've noticed here in the second half, Dakota Fagg, the leading wide receiver for Florida State, is out for the game. In that first half, he re-injured a shoulder injury that he has. They're calling it a slight shoulder separation, but he is done for the night. So you're starting to see more and more receivers in there trying to get things going for Florida State. We'll see if they can do it. Florida State now with a down to play with, actually a second down and three. Ninth play of the drive. It started at the 20. As you look at Fagg on the sideline, From the shotgun, they go with a running play to Booker. Going to have the first down. And boy, that's Brooks, Ahmad Brooks, who roughed him down with a hard tackle over there on the sideline. The first thing you'll see, Donnie Carter gets an excellent block. The tight end, 88, 
gets a great block right there on Matt Miller, then the second thing you're going to see is Ahmad Brooks right there inside out on that football. Good to see him back healthy. Well, I guarantee you the defensive coaches are ecstatic. He may not be 100%, but 80% of him is better than 100% of most. First down, Florida State at the 20-yard line. They trail by 16. We're about to go under seven minutes to play third quarter. And the Knowles trying to get back on the scoreboard. Quick pass, got it far sideline. And this is Willie Reed, who had three very big catches in the first half. Impressive drive right here, particularly the quarterback, Drew Weatherford. Really, Ron just taking the old cliche, taking what the defense gives you. Virginia playing a lot of zone coverage. There's been a lot of short, little, intermediate routes. Impressive drive right here for Florida State. Weatherford looking back over to the bench. Checking the wristband. Play clock. Still got plenty of time. 13 and down to 12. B.J. Dean is the fullback, and they have him blocking. Give the ball to Lorenzo Booker, and he's close to the first down. But from where that linesman at the top of your screen came in, he is not going to be given credit for it. And I, when I state that, I'm not saying he made more than that. I'm simply saying he's not going to pick up the first down. Kwaku Robinson is the man who's there to make the stop. So now the crowd again coming to their feet. Just a matter of inches to pick up the first down. It's a third down snap. 12th play of the drive, and Weatherford will take it right into the line. Chris Long was the first man, I believe, down at the bottom of the stack to make contact on the play. Number 91, yep, you could see him get up there just a moment ago. Sure looks like a first down, doesn't it? Bob, it does if you uh, if you're looking at that yellow line to see just exactly how close it is. You have total faith in that yellow line. That it, yellow I, line never betrays you. No, uh, but this is going to be inches. There you go. It's inches. About five of them. First down, Florida State. And if you're Florida State. I bring this up because they have been a self-destructive offense in the first half. Excellent drive to this point. Just no mistakes right now. And finish this drive off with some points and a touchdown. Look out. The head coach on the headsets over there across the way. Movement along the offensive line. And it looks like Niblock. And I think I just said no. Prior to the snap. Full start. Number 62 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Those self inflicted mistakes, Ron, will drive you crazy. First and 15 is a whole lot different than first and 10. That's the ninth Florida State penalty on the night. New line of scrimmage to 15. Davis in motion, but they swing it out. Booker, really nice defense on the part of the Cavaliers. Mike Brown, the first man to get out there, and now some pushing and shoving. We've just had a late flag come into the pile. First thing, I'm impressed with Chris Long, number 91, the defensive end. His speed. Chasing that football out there and setting up that tackle for Mike Brown. That was impressive. Yeah, Bobby also has a very good motor. We have multiple dead ball fouls. We have a dead ball personal foul. 52 in the offense. We have a dead ball personal foul. 88 on the defense. Those penalties will offset. The down will count. Second down. First of all, watch Chris Long from the inside out here chase this football. Tackle by Mike Brown. There it was right there late. Willie Reed. A clean 
and sent him offsetting penalties. So it's second down, still second and goal. Little surprise, Florida State with two tight ends on the field, Ron, and really what amounts to a short yard. Is, They're well, going to call a timeout right here. So let's take it with them. 5:37 left, third quarter, 26 to 10, Virginia, and the Seminoles trying to threaten. We are back in uh, Charlottesville, 26 to 10, our score with five minutes and 37 seconds left to play, third quarter, and Greg Carr, number 89, has come back in to the ball game as you look at Weatherford perfect on this drive five of five thirty three yards car at the bottom of your screen the six six receiver who is uh, about once out of every two catches he scores a touchdown very tough to deal with looking over the middle drills the pass thrown behind the intended receiver Willie Reed really do have to be impressed as we look at the Cody Fag, Florida State's leading wide receiver over there with the sling but you really do have to be impressed Ron with this Virginia defense they have hung in there all night third down third down and goal confusion from the Florida State sidelines it's like they're gonna have to burn another time out here And a timeout taken by Florida State. I hate to overuse the word self-destruction, Ron. But again, Florida State with a great drive, has some momentum. And all of a sudden, they've become unraveled again because of their own doing. Bobby with that headset on. When he puts the headset on, he loves to go to eye backs and do some old school Florida State offense. Hagan's on the sideline resting that leg. Had a little bit of a problem with a hamstring in the first half. And the thing that the trainer said, they were trying to make sure that they kept it warm. Right now, he's just sitting and relaxing, though. His night is getting long because we kicked off, mm, let's see, what, just over three hours ago. We still got 5.33 to play in the third quarter. This is easily going to be a four hour ball game. Booker in motion, bottom of your screen. Looking right over the middle, and the ball is tipped and almost intercepted. And in fact, if the two defenders had not collided, Franklin's a man that got a hand on it. And I think that Sinton or Sentum was in a position to make the pickoff, but he got bumped into by his own teammate. An excellent drop by the linebacker Ahmad Brooks, and really Florida State very fortunate that they have a field goal opportunity right here. Sismasia to attempt the field goal. It's 32 yards on the attempt. And he missed it. That was a lot of time and a lot of work for no points for the Seminoles. Holly Rowe, let's check with you down on the sideline. What do you got? Well, Ron, during that last timeout, there was some confusion. They wanted to bring in wide receiver Fred Rouse, number one. They were looking everywhere for him. He was down clear on the other side of the sideline. An assistant coach went down there, kind of chewed him out for being out of place and kind of pushed him out on the field. Fred went a little nuts, was very push, pushed back against the assistant coach, and they put him back on the sideline, would have not let him go out for that play. Instead, number 80, Shaw went into the game. So a little unusual exchange on the Florida sideline. They did not get their key playmaker out on the field in that last critical third down. Well, in that last shot that we just saw, he's still arguing with his teammates. And why he was out of place, nobody knows. But he cost him another timeout. As they go long, they had a home run right there. Deion Williams was open. And you look at Marcus Higgins, and he's saying, oh, my goodness. 
about 12 inches shorter, and we would have had 33 points on the board. And a tremendous opportunity. Florida State in a two-deep zone. Tony Carter allows him to run unrestricted to the outside. Didn't buy any time for the safety, and that would have been a huge, huge play. But Florida State that time in zone coverage, and you're right, Mickey, he did not jam that wide receiver and force him. And there's Pat Watkins, the safety. Mickey took both of them out of the game. So second down and 10, they swing this one out. Got it complete to Johnson. Michael breaks a tackle, has the first down, and is going to have an additional seven, maybe eight yards. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. Well, that's, that's an impressive win up uh, on the road in uh, Vanderbilt, putting away a ball club that uh, has improved tremendously this year. Santee in motion. This pass zinged and uh, caught by Anderson, Ottawa Anderson. Ernie Sims was there defensively to make the stop. Ron, when you move the football offensively like Florida State did and you don't get any points, the air comes out of the balloon, not only for the offense, but for the defense. And uncharacteristic right now with Florida State defense, they're caving in a little bit and missing some tackles. And that guy right there is not real impressed with what's going on in the football game. <laughs> Wally Lundy checks in. Second down and six. Wally weaves his way. He's going to have another first down. He takes it out across midfield to the 49. Buster Davis will put an end to that run. Well, you have to wonder about that second timeout that Florida State had to call because they could not find their freshman wide receiver, Fred Rouse. And then him being so upset in the far sideline. A lot of little signs of it unraveling right now for the Seminoles. Keep in mind, they are a young, young football team. They need right now for somebody to step up and make a play and get some leadership right now, starting with this defense. Blitz coming inside. And this running play is going to be snuffed out with a loss of one. Buster Davis again. Coming over to uh, make the tackle. Guyon also helping out, number 93. You can see the freshman out of Stark, Florida. Well-prepared Virginia football team. My hat's off to Al Groh and his staff. So far in this football game, they have been outstanding. Kevin Ogletree checks into the lineup, number 20. He is uh, playing for the first time tonight out of St. Albans, New York. Hagan, boy, worlds of time complete to Lundy. And Wally will be tackled at the 47 by my Marcelo Church. Higgins, Ron, I think this guy, he may not be a quarterback in the NFL, but he could be a running back slash wide receiver type athlete because he played some wide receiver early in his career also returned kicks and punts but look at that night he's at 22 of 30 against a big time defense 287 yards two touchdowns third down they need to take it down to the 40 yard line here comes pressure but they get off the, the middle screen in London whoa does he take a hit Jason Snelling I beg your pardon they threw to Snelling the fullback Ron, the only reason I say Marcus Higgins may not be a quarterback at the next level, I love him, but when he walks in a room, he is about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, difficult in that league because you don't make a living scrambling as a scrambling quarterback in the NFL. And they're all talking to Fred Rouse now, trying to get him settled down. But that's not their biggest problem. Chris Gold, only his second punt of the night. His brother kicking with the uh, Chicago Bears. 
as we mentioned he is going to be the place kicker next year after Connor Hughes has graduated that ball is going to bound and be touched dead at around the 20 yard line so we'll take a timeout. 113 left third quarter still a 16 point lead by Virginia some of the capacity crowd here tonight in Charlottesville as you can imagine up by 16 points over a heavily favored Florida State football team this crowd is really enjoying the night the wave's been going on now for a couple of minutes and I mean old and young alike are participating here comes a blitz off the corner it's picked up in the pass thrown complete to Carr, and Carr will take it for a first down out to the 35 right now let's send it to Joe Tessitore Joe Okay, <laughs> I tell you what, I hope the guys are, you know, are in for a little bit of a, a rest there because uh, we're not going to be done here for a time because of the lights going out. 20 minute delay to open the second half. That pass may have been tipped and it's still caught down the near sideline at the 48 yard line by Jocelyn Shaw. And I'll tell you, heavy, heavy pressure. Give credit to Ahmad Brooks. He almost knocked this pass down. Maud Brooks having a good night and Jocelyn Shaw his opportunity to play because Fred Rouse is probably over there still barking about something on the sidelines and he takes advantage of it right there. First down. They swing this pass out, and it's uh, too tall for Leon Washington. Holly Rowe, let's check back on the sideline. You got any idea exactly what's going on? Well, guys, the, the offensive coach has got Fred Rouse up, got his helmet on like he was ready to come into this ball game, and then he kind of talked back and had an attitude with one of the other coaches, so they said, forget it. So he is back with his helmet off. He is uh, not showing a good countenance right now, guys. You know, the coaches said he has the chance to be one of the greatest they've ever had at Florida State if they could keep him humble. And it looks like this is going to be an interesting experience they'll learn from tonight. Well, <laughs> it's it's far from humility <laughs> right now on the far sideline. Boy, he's really upset about something. And he's being a, a real distraction to his whole team. This pass not even close. Closer to a defender, Nate Lyles than to a Seminole on the play. Coming to you tonight from Charlottesville, Virginia, Scott Stadium, undefeated and fourth ranked Florida State trying to keep that perfect record alive. Right now, 28 seconds left in the third quarter, so 15 minutes and 28 seconds away from having happened to them what happened 10 years ago this year, and that is their first loss in conference play in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And one thing that Florida State has had success on, Ron, clearing those wide receivers and then bringing people underneath. Virginia running with receivers down the Here field. Here they bring everybody on this play. Parham almost had the stop. The ball is drilled into the ground, and it was caught but out of bounds, incomplete. Leon Washington was the closest man to it. And that time, Al Golden, the defensive coordinator, Comes with the linebacker blitz from the boundary. Kai Parham again. A well-prepared 3-4 defense. Keep in mind, Al Groh, a protege of Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick. They have played the 3-4 defense to perfection tonight. Chris Hall back deep to get this kick away. And this is not going to even turn over as a spiral. The ball picked up at the last moment by Virginia's Michael Johnson. And a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. And I think Virginia on 12 men on the field right there.
They're calling in the back judge, I believe, because he's responsible for counting the number of men on the field. Virginia obviously had one player who thought he shouldn't be out there. Now, maybe they did not get caught with 12. There's guys. no foul. The 11th player exited the field. That is no foul. Self-explanatory. You see the Virginia player leave the field here late, but he was the 11th player and not the 12th player. Good job by the officials right there of just sorting that thing out. Well, you saw the smile on uh, Coach Bowden's face. As if to say, now they're playing only 10 against our 11, and they're still up by 16 points. What a revolting development this is, huh? Nebrika Shaw Ferguson comes back out with the offense, and he'll occupy that left tackle position, number 66. Brick, as his teammates call him, 6'6, 289, a senior out of Freeport, New York. And the pros really love him because he is tough against speed rushers. Draw play right up the middle, close to the 25 is Wally Lunde. That is the end of the third quarter, and everybody. Situation second down, and Virginia needs to take it to the 30 yard line. Here's Hagens right over the middle, got it complete. It's going to be short of the first down to Fontel Mines. And some, uh, some attitudes beginning to uh, get a little larger out on, on the field, and the officials are going to have to watch this one closely because. Florida State, number four in the country, undefeated. Virginia trying to duplicate what they did here 10 years ago, and that see. is to knock off Florida State. Go ahead. I think Marcus Higgins, it all comes down to the quarterback run. You've seen this Florida State defense over the years. They can intimidate opponents. They cause opponents to unravel, but when you have a 22-year-old quarterback with the confidence and playmaking ability that Marcus Higgins has, They've been unable to disrupt this Virginia offense. Illegal substitution. 12 players broke the huddle. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. So a huge difference in this call coming right here instead of third down and inches. Third down and about five and a half yards to pick up the first. Boy, a bunch of substitutes coming on and off that field for both teams. But obviously, you can't break the huddle on offense for 12, with 12 guys because it's deceptive to the defense. Four wide receivers for Virginia. Blitz coming right up the middle. It's picked up nicely. Now here's pressure from the outside, and he's going to be sacked by Cameron Wembley. Second sack for Wembley tonight. And Eddie Phillips, number 72, the right offensive tackle. Tough, tough matchup with Camerian Wembley. We look right here at the bottom. Good inside-out move, and that time, Ron, Marcus Higgins could not escape it. Excellent field position right now for Florida State. Here's the kick. This is a spiral that's going to turn over, but it's a little bit of a line drive from the 46 is Willie Reed. And Reed being spun around. Excellent coverage for the special teams. And Kai Parham, who's done a little bit of everything tonight, is the man who got there to make the tackle. So let's take a timeout. 13 10 left in the ball game. Virginia still leads by 16. Well, they're very happy here in Charlottesville right now, leading by 16 points, and we have 13-10 left in the ball game. They don't care if this one goes into Sunday morning. Uh, if it takes two days to beat Florida State, so be it, say the Cavalier faithful. And a look at Fred Rouse, who is checked into the ball game number one. Weatherford, ball is blocked at the line of scrimmage, and that is K. Koo Robinson, senior out of Brooklyn, New York. This Virginia defense, again, a tremendous job. Only rushing three players right there. They come around with the nose guard twist on it. Kwaku Robinson, a 330-pound nose guard, Ron, came around and knocked that football down. These guys are having fun out here wearing those blue helmets tonight. Yeah, they are. Now he's talking it over with his teammates exactly how he did it. We need to see Leon Washington with that little screen pass right here, don't we? 
Well, he, he has the difference maker in the ball game tonight as far as a 58 yard run and that ball is thrown almost intercepted. Carr I assume was the intended receiver as he was cutting across the middle. Third down. They need to take it to the 37 yard line of Virginia to keep this drive going and obviously they are out of field goal range where they are right now. The numbers on Weatherford 27 of 43 two interceptions and no touchdowns. Here comes the blitz right up the middle Weatherford good protection got a man open and he makes the catch and that's Willie Reed. How many big catches has that young man had this evening. And it starts with the protection. Virginia is going to bring both linebackers on the little cross blitz right there. Weatherford gets protection, steps up, and a great throw to Mickey Andrews' favorite wide receiver, Willie Reed. That was a huge third down conversion, Ron. So that brought a little bit of a hush to the crowd here in Charlottesville. First down Seminoles from the 22-yard line. Weatherford right over the middle got this one complete to Davis still on his feet cuts it up the sideline he's going to score touchdown Florida State from 22 yards where has he been all night that looks like an energized fresh wide receiver but he's going to get a block from Willie Reed right here right there he gets a block and how about this spin move right there where has he been all night Chris Davis, big time play, and Florida State going for two, Ron. Well, it's a 10 point ball game right now. Trying to make it an eight point margin. Still 12 minutes, 31 seconds play, left to play in the ball game. Seminoles had a long drive in the second half, came away with no points. Greg Carr is the inside receiver at the top of your screen. Looking, there's Carr right over the middle, two points. So the 6-6 receiver makes it like child's play, and it is now 26-18. Okay, Reese, a look at Davis on the sideline, who, as Bob stated, looked like uh, a, a new player. Fresh set of legs on the field, and he really put a bounce in everybody's stride, except the folks from UVA. Now, the quiet kind of came over this crowd during that timeout period there, and they're thinking, don't let this happen. Well, they must see that graphic right there that says outscored 53-24 in the fourth quarter. Al Gruden grow new going in Ron had to play a lot of young players this is Pierman up the sideline 20 25 30 35 and he gets whacked down hard but not before he has the return of 43 yards almost to midfield that was Lawrence Timmons who really hit him hard but take another look at it and Cedric Pierman no relation to Alvin Pierman, the great Virginia tailback that was a fourth round draft pick by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Wow. Number 24 from Florida State. A poor job, Ron, of not turning that football back in. But great field position right here coming off the Florida State score for Virginia. Well, the Cavaliers are at the line of scrimmage, and Florida State having to get that defense in possession quickly. Pressure coming, swings the ball out to Johnson. Johnson with a stiff arm is going to pick up about five yards on the play. A.J. Nicholson is the man who was being stiff armed on the play. Michael's not a real big guy, but he got a hand in A.J.'s face and was able to ward him off for a couple of more yards. In fact, they have spotted it at the 47 yard line. Wally Lundy checks into the ball game at tailback. 
Second down and short. Blitz is coming. Hagens under heavy duress. Fumbles the football. It appears that Virginia has made the recovery. But now they're going to have third down at about 15 or 16 yards. Sam McGrew with some heavy pressure up the middle. You talk about Florida State playing a lot of players. Sam McGrew on the linebacker blitz. Also Broderick Bunkley. Huge field position swing right there and also sets up a third down run and 15. Big pressure right there, but Virginia did get the football back. Clock runs 11 minutes, 35 seconds to play. 26 to 18, Virginia on top. Hey, it's all kind of time now. Drills this one, has it complete. And the quick hit on Stupar, the tight end. And they're going to have now fourth down in about 13 yards. So the Seminoles are going to get this one back. Again, Mickey Andrews is going to spy a linebacker. If we let this thing roll right here, he's going to keep a linebacker spying. You look right here. You see, I believe that's Nicholson, the linebacker, spying on the quarterback, Marcus Higgins. It's actually Ernie Sims, but a good design right there by Mickey Andrews of taking a linebacker, spying the quarterback, don't allow him to scramble and throw on the run. That shows you what Marcus Higgins to, can do to a team, even a good and speedy defense like Florida State. Bryant shaking up in the play. J.R. a sophomore out of Miami. Tell you what, the tomahawk chop run coming to life a little bit here in Charlottesville. You can hear it in the background. And the Virginia folks don't like that. <laughs> they, they boo just real loud every time that tomahawk chalk chant comes up. I didn't, say, I didn't think they boo at a high academic university like Virginia. They do boo at a place like Charlottesville. Either that or they're saying something that I'm woo? not it's aware maybe of. It's a woo. Could be woo. <laughs> Here's the punt. Boy, good rush on him, and he gets away. A wobbly spiral going to be taken by Reed at the 20. And a flag comes down. A second flag comes down. I tell you, there are some licks going on. Obviously, a block in the back right there by Florida State. 35 in the punt and five on the return. A talented mistake-laden Florida State football team here tonight, Ron. So let's take a timeout. 26-18 Virginia. We'll be right back. <laughs> They're booing that Tomahawk job a little bit. Huh? Is that instant recognition, though? You talk about Florida State football and how you identify with that Tom and Hawk chop. That is great branding, isn't it? Everybody in the country that's a college football fan knows immediately when that song comes on. Here we come. It's first down for the Seminoles. Following that block in the back, they're going to be scrimmaging from their own 12-yard line. This time it's Lorenzo Booker, number 28, in a tailback. Here comes a blitz off the corner. He picks it up. Pass is thrown incomplete. As Fred Rouse couldn't hold on to it. And so much attention, Ron, on Fred Rouse over on that sidelines. Let me say this. This is a talented, talented young guy. He wants to be in the game. He wants to make plays. They're just trying to channel it in the right direction. Doesn't mean he's a bad guy. He's just a young guy that's frustrated. Now he has his opportunity to make some plays. Just go make a play, Fred. It'll all be good. Second and ten, Weatherford drops, now rolls. Under pressure, just going to throw it away. And a flag comes down, and Chris Long was there as the ball was being thrown. Roughing the passer, Virginia. Huge call because it would have been third and ten. Don't like the call, Ron. 
I don't, I don't like that call. I guess technically you may say he drove his face mask into the quarterback, but in defense of Chris Long, how did he even know the ball had been released? I didn't like the call. Huge penalty, though, and we'll put an asterisk by it because it moves it out to the 27-yard line, and it's a new set of downs for the Seminoles. Who trail 26-18 with the 10 and a half minutes left in this ball game. Here comes pressure, and Weatherford gets it away, has it in and out of the hands of Davis. Oh, what a job by Weatherford just to get the ball away. Davis was there, and he dropped it. And that's Keenan Carter who was all over. And again, excellent pressure by Ahmad Brooks right here. And boy, Chris Davis would have gained some yards after the catch. You know, he had Rouse come in from the corner, from the sideline, to throw a block for him. Blitz again. Weatherford running for his life, and he's going to take it up the field, and wow, does he get hammered from behind. I think Vince Red is the man who got there. Also, Chris Long was in the area, and that's going to be a gain of eight. And a lot of twist stunts up front from Virginia, twisting defensive linemen, and Drew Weatherford is a good athlete. Keep in mind, this kid last year played one play broke his ankle against North Carolina. I'm talking about Drew Weatherford, but he is a good athlete. He runs better than you think. Third down. They need a couple of yards here to pick up the first. Pressure from the outside. Ball is thrown complete, and Willie Reed will have the first down. Jamal Jackson there to push him out of bounds. Now nine and a half minutes left to play. Ron, one thing you see with Virginia's inability, really because of personnel, to play man-to-man -man coverage, a steady diet of zone. If Florida State can protect some zone blitzes, they're starting to pick this zone coverage apart a little bit. Now over 300 yards for Weatherford, 30 of 48. Weatherford stands in the pocket, drills it to Davis, wide open over the middle, spinning, tries to pick up additional yards, and he's down at the 32-yard line. 26 yards in the pass play, and Ryan Best finally put a stopper on him. Starts with pass protection again. Some twist stunts up front. Florida State picks it up. And how about Chris Davis, Ron, bouncing back from the drop he had just a minute ago in this Florida State offense right now, picking apart zone coverage if he gets pass protection. Well, I'll tell you what, Chris Davis always looks like he's got fresh legs. He can really motor. Draw play right up the middle. Going to have about five yards. Lorenzo Booker, the junior out of Ventura, California. Reese Davis, let's check in with you. Okay, Reese, and that's where this crew will be. We'll be down in uh, Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. And a reminder, the contender coming up next, immediately following our ball game. We're about to go under eight minutes to play in regulation. 26-18, Virginia on top. Weatherford with the audible. Blitz coming right up the middle. Drills to the far sideline. It's Davis. Keeps his feet. Did not go out of bounds. And Davis is going to pick up an additional five yards. Jackson finally got him off the field to play. And Ron, the thing you love about Bobby Bowden, he does not overreact. This guy's won 350 football games or something. Doesn't react to being behind. Doesn't overreact to the Fred Rouse situation. If you notice, Fred Rouse has been on that field about every snap since that confrontation. This guy's seen a lot of different things, but you don't rattle Bobby Bowden. And you see that with this football team right here. First down for the 15. 
Weatherford looking, looking. The ball is almost intercepted. And I think he was trying real hard to get the ball to Rouse. <laughs> and almost threw it to a Cavalier, Jamal Johnson. And the best thing about freshmen, they become sophomores. They become sophomores. He That's is right. still a freshman quarterback. I mean, you take that for granted. But this whole offense and this spread offense, it is all about the quarterback. Second down and 10. Now keep an eye on the man who's at the bottom of your screen. And that's Greg Carr. The end zone had him open and he overthrew him. Willie Reed, number 26. He decoyed with Carr to the left and threw it back to the right to Willie Reed. And Carr would have caught this because he's 6'6". Well, you're right. <laughs> Willie Reed's 5'11". Oh, right through his head. Boy, he was wide open in the corner of that end zone. Keep in mind, Florida State, a 15-yard drive run in the 15-play drive in the third quarter. No points. They've got to get points. Third down. They need to make the five. Over the middle, the ball almost intercepted again. It's fourth down. Ryan Best, that's two times tonight that Ryan could have come away with an interception. A freshman quarterback. Great break on the ball by Ryan Best, but again, as you mentioned, unable to come up with the interception. Sismatia attempting this field goal from 32 yards away. And the kick is good this time. So we'll hold it right here with 735 showing on the clock. And it's now a five point ball game. Virginia led by 16 at the end of the third quarter. And, and how big mistakes come back to haunt you. You just mentioned, Ron, it's a five point ball game. Let's go back to the first half. Florida State right here, Leon Washington is, is going to score on this play, but it's called back on the holding penalty. That's seven points off the board. And here, on the interception by A.J. Nicholson, it's nullified because Ernie Sims late hit. Virginia eventually kicks a field goal right there. That's a 10-point swing right there because of Florida State's penalties. So it's 26 21 7 35 showing on the clock Weatherford on the phones and on the near side of the field Al Groh knows full well that the fourth quarter has not been good to his football team and he discussed yesterday very openly how they were going to try to get more bodies on the field and have fresher players when they came to the final 15 minutes. You know why he wears that sweatshirt. Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick is his fashion designer, but he told me yesterday truly that he really does wear that sweatshirt on the sidelines because there's a little bit of perception at Virginia high academic school. Maybe some people consider it a little bit soft kind of an Ivy League school. He wants to change that image. That's why he wears that sweatshirt on the side. Ron Franklin Bob baby Holly Road coming to you from Charlottesville Virginia. The fourth ranked Seminoles of Florida State trying to pull this one out. They're undefeated, but the Cavaliers trying to duplicate what happened 10 years ago, and that is to knock off Florida State. And right now, it's a 26 to 21 ball game at seven and a half minutes left to play. And there's the man of the hour right there. His teammates call him Biscuit, and he won't tell us why. Doesn't really matter. But I'll tell you, this is a guy that, as Bob said back at the beginning of the telecast, he walks in the room and he lights up the room. Just a tremendous personality on a young guy with tremendous athletic ability. But the thing is, it, it just it is felt by everybody on that field when he comes out there. He doesn't have to holler at anybody. They know what kind of expectations he has of the other 10 folks out there on the field with him. Back in the pocket, swings out the pass. And missed a tackle and a gain of about eight yards on the play because of the missed tackle. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. Okay, Reese. 
those contenders are getting burnt out out there. They've had to warm up so many times getting ready for this boxing match. Well, we had a power failure for those of you who are saying to turning on and say, wait a minute, what's this game still doing? We lost 20 minutes of the third quarter. Bumble, they scramble for it at the 28 yard line, and I think Hagen's got back on it. Anyway, to continue that story, two banks of lights went out, and so it was impossible to play, and both teams had to go back to the locker room, and that's the reason that this one has been going almost four hours right now. And that time, Brian Bartholo Bartholomus, the center, rolled that ball back. Third down and six, Ron, obviously, key, key. Call. Marcus Higgins with his legs right now. So it's third down, and the line to make is the 34. Folks down below us coming to their feet. Big play. Blitz right up the middle. Pass is caught, and it'll be stopped immediately. Wally Lunday is just engulfed by Roger Williams. So it is kicking time for Virginia. And you talk about closing speed. Watch the safety number eight, Roger Williams. You see him right in the middle of the screen back there deep. Watch him close on this football in a little bit of a robber scheme where you drop one of those safeties down. That was a key tackle right there. Fifth punt of the night by Virginia. Good kick. High wobbly spiral. This is Reed backing up all the way to the 22. Going to try to return. Tries to hurdle him in and will be stopped at the 25. 48 on the punt and three on the return. So the quarterbacks tonight, here's a graphic to tell you exactly what everybody has done. Weatherford, 32 of 53, 344 yards, one touch and two interceptions. And for Hagans, 27 of 35, 306, two touchdowns, no picks. 53 attempts for Weatherford. Obviously, Florida State behind, really from the beginning of this football game. Virginia's defense back on that field. Not a lot of depth. Crowd coming to life. And in fact, most everybody in the stadium is standing right now as we are down to five minutes and 21 seconds to play. Florida State trailing by five. The number four team in the country. And now here comes in a flag. Prior to the snap, full start, 79 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Boy, Florida State makes it hard on themselves. Obviously, five yards with this spread offense may not be significant with their style of offense, but man, you see 11 penalties right there on the night for Florida State. Eight on Virginia. So 19 stoppages of play tonight because of markers. Chris Davis has kind of become the go-to guy, Ron, late in this game for Florida State. See who Weatherford looks for. Coming with a blitz off the corner. Drills this one. Got a man deep. And he overthrew Chris, uh, Greg Carr. Jackson was the closest man to it. And another flag. Offside. Number 90 of the defense. Five yards in the line of scrimmage. Repeat first down. Vince Red is the man they called for being offsides. 517 left in our ball game. Right back where we started from two plays ago. First and ten. Here comes the blitz. Weatherford going to go on top. Got man coverage, and there he is, Carr. <laughs> Greg Carr. And you know, Bob, I, I, I just have to say, as elementary as it sounds, I just keep doing it until somebody can stop him because nobody has proven they can stop him yet. And you go back and look at Drew Weatherford. Watch him throw the football, the trajectory of that ball. He just throws it straight up in the air. And... The old saying, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. And that the Gregs. describes it right there. And the, and the Gregs, yeah. A 
until tonight he had been thrown to nine times and had five touchdowns. Middle screen. Leon Washington going to take it down to the 40 yard line. Clock runs four minutes 39 seconds left in regulation. That's Best who is there to make the tackle. Boy, they're going to take a walk back. Flag right there in the middle of the field. Holding. 62 of the offense. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Not many times do you get holding on a quick developing screen pass like that. Hundred and nineteen wow. yards and penalties, rushing yardage ninety-five. Here comes pressure on Weatherford. Spins out of it and throws this one away. And he got it across the line of scrimmage. Chris Long uh, is the man who was relentless with the pressure. Again, Kai Parham comes on the cross stun up front, but Chris Long in the backfield again. Boy, Florida State struggles with pass protection. And a really good job by Drew Weatherford right there, Ron, of just avoiding a really poor, poor loss. Well, Weatherford knocked down five times, hurried four, and sacked once. Second down. The ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third down and long. They've got to take this one all the way to the 37-yard line. And the clock shows 4.07. And an excellent job again by Al Golden, the defensive coordinator, alternating run between three and four-man rushes. You see Kai Parham right there. He got the tip. How about the night he's had? And he is a linebacker, but they also slide him down, and he becomes the fourth rusher. You look at Al Golden, excellent game plan, but third and 15. No gimme right here for the Virginia defense with these receivers on the field for Florida State. So here they come. Castillo out over the football. As I said, they got to take it all the way to the 37. Weatherford. Little screen in the middle. Not going to go anywhere. I mean, Willie Reed was just covered up. Brendan Schmidt. And that call right there, Ron, shows you two things. Number one. Florida State does not have much confidence in their pass protection. And the second thing, this Virginia defense just continues to come. I mean, for them to throw this screen on third down and 15 with the talented wide receivers they have means they can't protect. Here's the punt. Lazy spiral. Fair catch is called for and made at the 18. Michael Johnson on the receiving end. He's another one of the big guys going to go down on this Saturday. Penn State fell from the ranks of the unbeaten today. Virginia trying to do that to Florida State. Alabama got a scare down at Oxford, Mississippi. Had to kick a field goal as time was running out. Ohio State had to come from behind. And a real bad bumble by the special teams of Michigan State. Here's pressure. They throw the ball and it's dropped at the 19-yard line. It's Ottawa Anderson. Now the AP top 10, you see what they did today. Virginia Tech was idle. Frank Beamer's probably sitting at home saying, hey, I'm glad we're off. There's something in the water this weekend. <laughs> Penn State loses. Notre Dame loses. Second loss for Notre Dame. And Florida State is within three minutes and 28 seconds of losing here in Charlottesville. Virginia leads by five. Santee in motion. And now Hagen's in trouble. He's going to have to run. The open field, and he'll be stopped shy of the first down. It's going to be third and about four. Gerald Ross came over to make the tackle, but a good job. It was a coverage tackle, so to speak, on that play. And Marcus knows if he could have gotten a block up there at the top of the field, 
he maybe could have turned that into a significant run. Ron, there was a lot of green grass, and Gerald Ross stepped in there and made a great play, but he had a bunch of real estate out in front of him. So Florida State uh, called a timeout there to uh, save some of the clock. It's third down and four. I don't think Virginia can run the football for a first down, so it's about this kid right here, number 18. But what a great job tonight, again, by Al Groh and this staff, Ron. They won their first three football games of the year over teams they probably should beat, if you're honest. They lost their last two ACC conference games uh, the last two weeks. They come in here, a lot of injuries. Tremendously well-prepared football team, regardless of what happens from this point on. And, and what people don't realize is how shorthanded because of injury and how many guys are playing with injury on the defensive side of the ball. It really has been an effort by them tonight. Third down, they got to take it to the 29 yard line. Hagans zips it and flags are going to come down. If Carter had just taken his hand off his back, he would have intercepted it and run it for a touchdown. He saw it the whole way. He could have cut in front of the receiver and made the play, but his left arm held the receiver, Deion Williams, right there. Watch. He makes a great read on this. Watch him break on this football. And right now, if he would have just looked at the football the whole way, he could have had an interception and taken that to the house, Ron. And as it is, he gives UVA a gigantic first down. We're at 3 minutes and 11 seconds left to play. That's either going to be one of two things, an incomplete pass or an interception if he just plays the football right there and not the man. I think when Bobby goes back and looks at that one, he's going to come up with, with the same thought and the fact that the youngster didn't realize what a good jump he did have on it. Hagan's going to hold on to it and then rush it out to the 34-yard line before Ernie Sims will uh, stop him. And now, if you're Florida State, you got to be careful because Hagan's will just keep doing that and they will chew up a lot of clock here. And the reason the crowd booing Florida State, no timeouts left in this football game. Obviously, the clock stopped with the injury right there to Ernie Sims, but what a key pass interference on third down with no timeouts left for Florida State. Holly Rowe, let's check in with you down on the sideline. Well, guys, there's been a lot of talk here in town this week about the 10-year anniversary of the first time that Virginia was able to beat Florida State in ACC play. They even made these trading cards with something called the play commemorating that. The entire team from that year, 1995, was back here being honored at halftime for their ACC championship and, of course, that key win against Florida State. But the players say that it has created a buzz with them. Some of the coaches on the staff played in that game and told them just how hard it is to win this game, how much energy and heart they had to play with, and they really seemed to take it to heart, guys. Holly, thanks very much. It, uh was quite a reception for those guys at halftime. The crowd continuing to uh, to boo, uh, not believing that Ernie Sims was really shaken up. And since the Seminoles have no more timeouts, it did stop the clock, and obviously he has to go off the field to play for at least one play because of the trainers coming out. Now, good look at George Welch again up in the stands. 1982 to 2000. I don't think he thought Ernie Sims was really hurt either right there. I thought that's he was, what he said. I think huh? he was diagnosing from up there at a high level. He didn't buy that injury. Uh, George could always be a faraway diagnoser. <laughs> Blitz coming right up the middle. And the running play with Michael Johnson is just not going to go anywhere. In fact, he's going to lose a couple of yards. But the clock now at two and a half minutes and counting. And no timeouts again for Florida State. Big decision right here for Al Grohl, Ron. Do you take a chance and throw that football? I would run that football, eliminate the risk of a turnover, and then punt that football and keep that clock running. And I would run it with number 18 on a naked bootleg or something right here. Well, here comes third down, and they've got to take it to the 39 if they want to hold on to the football. Blitz right up the middle by Nicholson, and... 
Marcus scrambling, breaks a tackle close to the first down, but he's not going to have it. Nope, they're going to say his knee is down just across the 37. Buster Davis got him. And, Ron, it sets up fourth down. Virginia will let this clock run down and then punt it. Keep in mind, Virginia, a punt blocked last week against Boston College. Yeah. Florida State with two punt, two punt blocks on the year for them. Al Gross spent extra time with the special teams on Thursday, working on protections, knowing full well that the Seminoles are very capable of doing just that, blocking punts. Read the deep man. And here they come, but he gets it away at his best kick of the night. Wow. It turns over all the way back to the 15-yard line, and Reed's going to take it back to the 26. So Florida State's going to have 56 seconds to work with. It's 47 yards. Probably a postcard that both Higgins and Stupar would like to send to relatives. Kind of like 1995, one of those old postcards from this game. This place is going to erupt in 56 seconds if the Knowles can't get it in the end zone. Pass long over the middle. It is intercepted at the 45-yard line. Tony Franklin. Pressure. Watch Ahmad Brooks, number 34, the linebacker, come around on the twist stunt. Makes Drew Weatherford step up and throw the ball and release the ball high. And Tony Franklin, 1995. They do it again, Ron, in 2005. Unbelievable. Hagans simply will take a knee. Florida State can't do anything about it. Clock is running 45 down to 44. Uh, folks, the party is about to begin. It is almost Sunday here in Charlottesville. This party is going to go on until well into Sunday morning, I can promise you. And what 29 is seconds down to 28. Tremendous job of total team preparation. Great 3-4 scheme on defense. And number 18, Marcus Higgins on offense. They'll get ready for the celebration. 13 seconds down to 12. Marcus looks up at that play clock. It shows three. He'll take the snap, take a knee, and it will be Florida State falling from the ranks of the unbeaten as 10 years later. Virginia pulls the upset tonight of the number four team in the country, Florida State, 26-21.